Hello and welcome again to another video lecture on engineering physics and this time we would now be discussing about moment of inertia. So what is inertia in the first place? So when we google the term inertia, we would stumble across this definition here by Oxford Dictionary and it is well according to this page, inertia is to be a tendency to do nothing or to remain unchanged. And another, another definition of it is that it is to be a property of matter by which it continues in its existing state or rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless that state is changed by an external force. So in other words, when we say inertia, this is very much synonymous with the term resistance. So when we say moment of inertia, and since inertia is to be synonymous with the term resistance, so this is basically the resistance to moment. So when we say moment, if you can remember from before, this can be in terms of torque. So moment, so by moment, so this is now to be force times lever arm and its uh, force of action or its direction is either clockwise or counterclockwise. So suppose that we will be applying a certain uh, moment onto a certain matter. So let's say that this is now to be your matter. So if we would now be subjecting this with a moment, at both ends, for example, the tendency is to bend in this particular manner. So, ito yung magiging bending niya. Okay, so in actual practice, so I have just seen this one-fourth sheet of paper here. So, if I am now to um, apply moments at both of these ends, the tendency of the object is to bend in this particular manner. So, nag-apply ako ng moment dito, pati dito. So, thus, it is now to be bending okay so that is one application for moment so another application of moment of course is by rotation so suppose once again that this is now to be a stick and in this stick or let's say that this part is to be fixed at the middle so the tendency if we would now be applying a certain moment here or a certain moment here the tendency of this stick is to rotate oops that's not rotation so rotate so this is now to be another effect of moment and another effect of moment is what we would, we would be calling our torsion so suppose that this is now to be our section so let's say that this is now to be our section so in 3d so if we are now to apply a moment here the tendency of this particular um, section is for it to twist thus torsion so I will be reaching for something here and let's say once again that this is now to be our certain object. So in this object, if I am now to apply a moment at this particular point, so if I am to apply moment, nakita nyo, so the tendency of it is to twist. So I'm not quite sure if you can see. And if you can't, huwag na nga lang. So, eto, basta magtitwist siya. So, that is what we would be calling our torsion. Okay, so once again, um, when we are to apply moments, uh, the three possible scenarios is for the object to rotate, the object to twist. So, once again, so rotate, to twist, or to bend. Okay, so in moment of inertia, we have three types. So, we have the mass moment of inertia. So, the area moment of inertia and the polar moment of inertia. So, the mass moment of inertia is to be the resistance to rotate. So, rotation. And when we say area moment of inertia, this is now to be the resistance in bending. And for polar moment of inertia, this is now to be the resistance in torsion or in twisting. Okay, so in our topic in engineering physics, we will now be uh, focusing on mass moment of inertia. And as for area moment of inertia and polar moment of inertia, you will be discussing this in your higher years in your statics of rigid bodies. And if you want to watch a video about it, I will be posting a link in the description box if you want to advance study in area moment of inertia. So once again, that is to be for bending. And for mass moment of inertia, so once again we would be focusing here. And for mass moment of rot I mean mass moment of inertia, this is now once again to be the um, resistance to rotate. 
Okay, so our main formula here, so um, I or inertia is to be equal to mass times radius squared, provided that, for example, that this is now to be the axis. So let's say that this is now to be the axis of rotation. So once again, axis of rotation, but I O. So this is now to be the axis of rotation. So once again, axis of rotation. And let's say that this is now to be your particular object. So if this is now to be your object, and this is now to be subject to mass, so your mass M here is of course the mass of your object, and this R here is to be the distance from your axis of rotation up until your object. So this is now to be your value R. So once again, it is now to be measured from the object up until the axis of rotation. So what is to be axis of rotation in the first place? So if this is now to be your mass, the tendency of this object when rotated is, of course, to rotate in this manner. So pupunta siya dyan, then here. So meaning that this axis here is to be the center of your rotation. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so let us have an example for this short video to end. Oh, by the way, hindi na pala short, medyo matagal na pala. Anyway, so a 100 gram ball connected to one end of a cord with a length of 30 cm. So what is to be the moment of inertia of ball about the axis of rotation AB? So if this is now to be the axis of rotation AB, the tendency of this, if, if you would be rotating it, is that it would now be rotating in this particular direction. So it would be going here, then it would be going back here if that is now to be its direction. So with that, we can say that for this mass M here, so the mass M is to be equal to 100 grams. And uh, the R here, so R is to be equal to, so the length of the cord is to be 30 cm. So 30 centimeter. Okay, so once again, for the inertia, this is basically mass times R squared, but mass should be in terms of, so note, Mass should be in terms of kilograms, and R should be in terms of meter, meters. So with that, what I am going to do is that I will be converting this first into kilograms and into meters. So for 100 grams, so just multiply your conversion factor here, that for every 1,000 grams, there is 1 kilogram. So with such, this is now to be equal to 0 0.1 kilogram. So I will just be erasing this. So this is now to be its weight in terms of kilograms. Okay. Anyway, and as for the radius, so for the radius, I mean, for our value R, I should say, so R is to be equal to, so once again, 30 cm. And if I am to multiply my conversion factor here, so for every 100 centimeters, there is one meter. So centimeters would cancel out and would give you an, I mean, a value of R that is to be 0 0.3 meters. Okay, so with that, substituting known values, inertia is to be equal to mass times R squared. So this is now to be equal to mass, so 0 0.1 kilogram times R squared, and that is to be 0 0.3 meters squared. So looking at the calculator to your left. Oh, nangyari. So looking at the calculator to your left, so 0.1 times 0.3 squared. So our answer here is now to be equal to 9 times 10 raised to negative 3 kilogram meter squared. So this is now to be our answer for this particular problem. So there.